Welcome to episode two of this static build series. What we've got for you today is the first part that you would need from any static build. And that is coilovers. I remember how we said this is a budget build? Well, these are Rev 9 coilovers. They were $532. They seemed like the best bang for your buck coilovers I could find for the Legacy. Raceland did not make anything for these Legacy, so I couldn't go with Raceland, sadly, like I wanted to. Rev 9 did make some coilovers that were $399 before taxes, but those did not have camber top hats. I remember we're going for big camber, so top hats really help. So, box within a box. We're gonna, these also are 32 way dampening, which is gonna be really good. I'm not sure if we're gonna need Swift Springs or not. These honestly look pretty dang nice. For Rev 9, I'm honestly really impressed with the quality of these. What's interesting is these traditional coilovers will sometimes have a locking collar underneath this to lock this collar in place. And this one doesn't have that. It has an Allen key that sandwiches it to hold it in. That's kind of interesting. And yeah, but obviously we got to slam this as much as we can. So we're going to spin this as far up as we can until this isn't going to hit that. This is get close, close to the axle, but won't hit the axle. And we're gonna take this collar out and then we're gonna spin this collar down as far as we can go. We're also gonna oval these out for more camber. We're gonna slot these out for more camber. The rears aren't like that. The rears are a single bolt in the rear, but we're gonna do the same thing as spin them all the way. So we're gonna take the bottom collar out, spin it as low as it can go, and then take the spring all the way down, get as low as possible. But I have camber arms that are on the way for that. So that'll be next for the camber. We're gonna do camber arms in the rear slot the fronts of the top hats that should be perfect first what we are going to do is we're going to pull these stock shocks to spring out i'm going to swap it over and i'll show you guys what we're going to do to that stuff to get it as low as possible right off the bat That's the rear out. Let's see the what's the difference like. like quite a bit. Oh wow, and, and that's not even slammed it. yet. I think we might have to cut the tubs out like I did on my Forester. The the rears. This is why I need camber arms because I can't slot the rears. All the way out. There we go. Cool. Slide that off. Goodness. We'll throw this back on just for fun. <laughs> okay, that's maxed out now. Then we gotta loosen that. And we're gonna bring yep. this all the way down. We don't need preload. No. No. Nah, and wait, it's not dampening. Is that? Here, we'll just go. There, that's all the way hard. Nice. I think we'll be good. What, Gus? Look at this. Look at that. Yeah, it's a coil over. Okay. You spin it all the way down. The spring sits free, which gives you, you know, however much more clearance that is until this hits. And yeah, this will be fine because as soon as the car's on the ground, it'll compress and this will all touch. So this isn't that sketchy. And then the fronts. Oh, 
honestly. We'll just convert it to rear wheel drive. Right. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> Very nice. Slots worked out pretty well. You can see we slotted it. We got extra camber out of that. Maxed out the top hats. Should be decently tilty, boy. We're gonna kind of tighten this all together and then we're gonna throw the two wheels on and set this side on the ground and see how low it is. Yeah. Slam. Yeah! How yep. fancy is it? Does this have preload? Is it, okay. It needs to be stiff. It does need to be stiff. Is it not stiff? They were at like, you these jump are like on 8Ks. It. You jump on it. Ah, oh, it does move quite a bit. She's gonna be a nodder. We're gonna need swift springs. Yeah. I'm building a static car. You don't want your fender liners because they cause you to hit stuff and then you rub bad. So you just grab them. Oh. Ow. Got my mouth. And remember. Do it exactly like that. Do it exactly like this. If you don't do it like this, oh gosh. <laughs> uh, mm, okay, uh, don't look at that, but uh. Yeah, don't look at that, that's not a, uh... got more spider webs. Oh, I broke this bumper bracket when I was off-roading it. Oh, super bumper. Nice. She low. It's fine, because we got this thing on. Ah. Cup holder works. Yeah! Oh. Our check engine light went away. We're rubbing. What are we rubbing on? Ah, we're rubbing on the frame. No, it already settled that much. You're telling me I can't drive it like that? We got our little co-driver, Gus. Sit there, buddy. He's all good. You're all good. With AC blasting. We are gonna go for a. First drive, we just cleaned everything up, torqued everything. <clears throat> we had to raise the front a little bit because it was rubbing so bad it was undrivable. So I think we're gonna need Swift Springs in the front and then we had to pull the slots out because the stock wheels are hitting the coils. So when we put the new wheels on it, then we can slot them back in. I have tires on the way, so the tires should be here next week for those. I haven't scraped yet, which I'm kind of, I mean, the rears are totally maxed out. I don't know if we need to get Swifts for the rears. 
because the rears, um, I guess we'll see how low they settle and how low they'll sit with the wheels, but I might just need to order Swift Springs all the way around. Yeah, the dampening's twisted all the way up, all the way around. It's a little bouncy, but not a, not um, stupid bouncy, which we, and it's not stupid low yet either. Like this is, I can go down another inch in the front, but we rub really bad on the frame, which is why we had to raise it. It's still really low though. Like I'm still probably gonna have to raise it more if it settles any more than this. I'm surprised we're driving it right now and it's not rubbing as bad. We have a construction zone because we're in Utah, so we'll see how this goes. If there's anything big in here that we might hit. It's not as bouncy as I thought it would be. The rear is good. The front, we definitely need Swifts. The rear might be able to get away. Oh, a little bit rubbing on turn. The rear, we might be able to get away with not using Swifts but uh, we'll have to see how low, how good of fitment we have in the rear when we put the new wheels on is the issue. If we have good fitment, then we don't need Swifts in the rear. If we have bad fitment, we need to lower it more than we need to get Swifts. Because the rears are max, as maxed out as possible without switching the height of the springs. If I get four inch 28 Ks, I can go down another couple inches in the rear and still not rub. We actually got this thing pretty low. I get drive totally fine like this. So I think what is next, so the reason we didn't run all the camber in the front is because these wheels have such a high offset that with negative nine degrees, they were hitting the coil. So either throw new wheels on it or get spacers. The rear, this is literally maxed out. All the collars taken out, spun all the way down as far as it'll go, spring sat free in the air. And we still have about three inches up in here until I rub on anything. So I could throw 25 mil spacer on here, grab a four inch swift spring, go down another couple inches and still be fine. Also, I noticed my camber arms just got delivered. So that'll go on the rear, probably in the next video. But yeah, this is where we're getting this video. First video of the static build. Honestly impressed with how low these coilovers got it. Everyone, thank you for watching.